Hello, this is Amy DeMarco, and I am going to demonstrate my eyewitness lesson from a student perspective. So, the eyewitness website is eyewitness.usc.edu slash S is in Sierra, F is in Foxtrot, I is in India. And the first thing that students will do after they access the website is to click login on the top right hand corner and they will log in using their username and password. So for this demonstration, it's CI53 project. And then they click the login button. And this is the dashboard. And my student name for this is Abe Lincoln, and Abe is a member of CI 5630, which is the group I created as a teacher um, for this project. And since Abe is a student, he can see when I log in too, because um, he's a member of my group. And so these activities, um, if you scroll down, you'll see the activities that are assigned. Um, so I can assign multiple lessons if I chose to. And for this one, it's children and the Holocaust education. So we click down here. And I, this is how a student will see the lesson on the title, Children and the Holocaust Education. And then there's four sections. There's consider, collect, construct, and communicate. And each of these sections has different subsections. So this, um, the subsections for the consider section are background, a lesson in Nazi propaganda, fact not fantasy Walter in Germany, and video clips. So the first one is background. And this is an article from the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum's Holocaust Encyclopedia. And the article is called Indoctrinating Youth, which talks about how the Nazis um, inculcated their ideology and their way of life onto youth. And unfortunately, for some reason, the um, eyewitness website is, has some errors in it. And one of them is um, this applet here does not load images, so but the links do work. So students would have to uh, click on the links to open the images. So this one is of a little boy dressed in the Hitler Youth uniform, which was the Nazi equivalent of the Boy Scout. And um, students can look at this uh, image and read the caption. Um, and there's also another one where they can view other photographs associated with this article. And there's a more info tab, and this um, it's a little. I included a little summary of the article itself, and the APA reference where I got the article from. And um, students can also um, use the link to see the entire web page and context. And when the web page loads, they can see all the pictures that just come up as links here. And they have one question, and they can type their answer in the answer box. And when they click Save, that should show up on my side as a teacher. And then once they're done with that, they click Next and the next section of the lesson loads. This is a lesson in Nazi propaganda. And this is a picture of a, um, of a Nazi um, lesson. Um, it's called, um, it's from a book, a Nazi children's book called The Poisonous Mushroom, which was a propaganda piece by Julius Stryker, who was the publisher of Der Sturmer. Um, incidentally, Goebbels thought that this was over the top. Um, anyways, the anti-Semitic caricature 
is the title of this section and when you click more info it has a um, an English translation of the German caption at the bottom. Now since this picture is pretty small um, I included the reference and a hyperlink so that way students can click on the link and see a much larger version of this picture. And they have three questions to answer and they can just click this at the bottom to navigate through them. And this article here um, is the story of a of a Holocaust survivor named Walter who moved to North Carolina after World War II. And um, I have I typed out the directions uh, for students to read the to read the article and then answer the questions. And I also included some historical background the historical context of what was happening to Walter and um, the, que the, pres the following questions I actually obtained from a book called The Holocaust, a North Carolina Teacher's Resource um, and I included a hyperlink to that entire resource and that's also where I got the article from. And then there's some other references for um, en entries in the timeline or the historical background that I included so and then the rest of the pages are just the rest of the questions that I included and this next section this is where students will choose their video clip and the rest of the lesson focuses primarily on the video clip and so the purpose of this lesson is to um, make a word cloud based on the videos and so they have to collect five words and then they can um, they can change the color and the size so if you type a word up here and hit enter you can change the color, you can change the size, and then click next. So these are the words uh, over here, and then they have a two-part question to think about the clip and to think about what, hap what happened in the clip and why. Again, um, the purpose of this is to develop historical empathy and to, uh, and to connect the events of the past, in this case the Holocaust, with um, my students' own lives and um, things that could happen or might happen in their own lives. And this question here, this um, this reiterates um, the background information that they read in the first part of the lesson. So when they they answered a question about how they think that Jewish children were treated in Nazi schools, and this question asks for them to compare their answer to that question from that point of the lesson to um, after, uh, to their opinion, after they had viewed someone's actual eyewitness testimony. So, and then this is the quest reflection, and this is where students describe their word cloud and their, basically their reflection on the lesson and they can also download their word clouds and then this final part is for them to interact with their classmates and um, one of the things that my focus on in general is um, etiquette 
both in person uh, during a during a face to face discussion and on the computer because you know students are constantly online anymore. Um, that's just the way of the twenty first century. So it's important to teach proper discourse. So um, I'm constantly reiterating discussion norms. And here my directions are review, comment, and reply to at least one other classmate using our class discussion norms. Be kind and respectful, even if you disagree with your classmate. Remember, if you disagree with your classmate, attack the argument, not your classmate. That is one of the mottos of my classroom is you attack the argument not the person making the argument and here is where you can see um, the person's or the students work and when they click finish and submit I should be able to see their work okay so here is the teacher's version of eyewitness, which is very similar to the student version, actually, um, as far as how it's set up. So here's my activity feed where it shows when I've logged in and also when my students have logged in. And since I only have one student, it's, it's just Abe, Abe Lincoln. And um, on the right-hand side, you can see all of my groups, which if I was, um, if this was a whole bunch of classes that I had, I would have multiple groups. So for example, um, this one here says SS8A. So that would be Social Studies 8 period A, which right now has no students because I created it just to test it out. And then I have the CI 5630, which is my demo class. So, um, and the cool thing about Eyewitness is I don't have to just search all of my activities that I've assigned for every single student. Um, when a student completes it, there's a link right in the message. So I can just click on whatever they have submitted and go to it directly. So when we click on this, we can see the student's work. Now, if this was not a demo, ideally, every single question box would have an answer. And, and so my view is the entire lesson, so I get all the content, not just the questions. And And so what I would do is I would just go through every section, check their work, which for some reason on my side, I should see the word loud. And so if I go all the way to the end, I can see what um, Abe had done and I can grade it I can view it now in this if I was to grade this I would have to use whatever system that I use for grading um, I can't grade it directly from in eyewitness I could always leave a comment but if I left a comment then that could be seen by the rest of the class it wouldn't just be visible just to that student. So for privacy, I would have to use a separate outside system. But this is not, um, now to make an activity is what it looks like if I wanted to create an activity or edit this particular one. Um, everything pretty much turns into text boxes. So from the beginning, I can select whichever asset. Um, in this case, it was since it was an encyclopedia, if I click change, 
these are all the media that I saved. Now, um, to actually put in an encyclopedia, what I would have to do is I would have to search the encyclopedia articles from Eyewitness and then save it. And then it goes into my saved items and then I select it that way. Um, it's not intuitive. I actually had to email um, Eyewitness in order to get the instructions on how to do that. Um, because if you go here, it pulls up if you go here to the toolkit, but there's no link that says save. So I would actually, I actually had to search for it in Eyewitness, click save, and then, but construction is a whole other video. This is just an idea of what teachers can do. Um, 